my name's Rachel Linwood and um, I've been working here at Ginnaby College of Indigenous Australian Peoples for the last, well since 1998 um, and these days I'm teaching in our Bachelor of Trauma and Healing. My mother's people are the Birupai people. On my father's side uh, we are Bunjalung, Gumbangi and Dungari. Ginnaby is situated on uh, Widjibal country within the bigger Bunjalung nation. People that come into the course they would learn about the deeper aspects of the various experiences so forth of traumatisation amongst you know humankind. There is an indigenous focus but certainly it's not limited to that so we explore all the aspects of what traumatisation is and um, not in the way that many would define it. What we do within um, trauma and healing. So for example, we in a number of the units, um, a few of them in, in particular that we teach here through Ginnaby, have a strong inter and trans generational tra trauma focus. Okay, so this is where we talk about how um, trauma is transmitted or is transferred across generations. So if we locate that in an Aboriginal context within Australia, then, then we would look at um, if we were to expand it out, part, you know, beyond just the microcosm of the immediate family, we would look at how trauma has um, expanded and has been transferred across generations within Aboriginal families within Australia. Um, we link that very strongly to the, the whole fact of colonisation, to the whole fact of you know, what occurred at first contact, in deepening our understanding of the trauma cycles and how they actually work. So for example, and this is something that um, Judy Atkinson has talked about as well, um, if we consider the fact that we have um, a history where we had convicts and so forth that were, that were brought out from England and other areas um, who, were brought out, who were brought out on the prison halls and they had the experiences that they did of being traumatised as, as convicts they came to Australia. So we have a history of that and then how in the cycle of trauma, how, it pe how it people are traumatised and that's left unresolved and it's not worked through and, there's been, and, and no healing has taken place, then they can transfer those same behaviours onto others. So we have the coloniser that has perpetrate those behaviours onto Aboriginal people, the colonised, so to speak. Mm. And so if we consider that and then look at how that's built a momentum over many, many years, then it helps us to understand how we've gotten to where we have come from. Mm. Um, so we look at it in that way so that we see that it's not just about politics, although that obviously comes into it. But it's not just about politics, it's not just about social issues, but in fact it's wanting to go in a bit deeper beyond that and to understand the story or the stories that lie beneath the surface to explain why people behave the way that they do. So, so for example within the unit trans and inter intergenerational trauma we look at um, and also in the biological effects of traumatic stress, which is mm. one of the other units within, within the degree that we teach through here. Um, we look at the experiences of so Holocaust survivors. Mm. Okay? So the whole fact of an attempted annihilating of people, or that have um, people that have experienced quite, quite horrific torture. Mm. So, you know, we look at that too. Yeah. Right? So, again, we don't move away from having an indigenous focus but we just don't stay there and not yeah. move outside of that because for me the fact is you know whether you're black white or what you are humans right across the planet have experienced various forms of traumatization and so I, I feel that in terms of broadening, broadening our understanding it's good to be able to recognise the experience of peoples from various mm. cultural backgrounds. Mm. And you can still stay, stay, stay true to what's happening here in Australia with Indigenous people. Mm. First of all, we recognise healing as being an ongoing thing, um, that it's not some new age 
concept that is located out there in the ether, right? But then, but in fact, it's it's something that's that's very real. And I feel if you really understand it, it's not particularly complicated. It's quite it has a it has a simplicity about it if if you really understand it. It, it really is just about you know people being able to start to connect with the truth of what they've experienced and being able to start to work through that. Having people that want to go and work in the field and want to work within various organisations um, to work to address some of the, some of the needs that, that communities themselves are identifying. Mm. Rather than people saying, this is what your problems are, we're going to come and fix it. It's mm. saying, the community saying for themselves, nominating very clearly for themselves, this is what's happening within our community, this is what's happening with our mob, and this is how, and this is what we feel needs to happen to address it. Mm. Columbia is in West, it's a remote community in Western Australia. Um, Guinea's relationship with, with this particular community in Columbia is ongoing. So we do have the Masters students from our Masters of Indigenous Studies and Wellbeing degree who have been working over there. Mm. Um, Timor Lest, well, Glenn Woods, who's our head of school, he's been doing some work over there recently. Um, we've also had one of our master's graduates, Judy Knox, who is doing some work over in, where is she now? I think she's over in Boba Villa. One of our graduates, Ina Bradbridge, and she works really hard over there um, in working with, you know, running, I'm pretty sure she runs the orphanage, but she's got a key, she's got a key role there. And you know, she's been working with us as well. Mm. And is wanting to implement, or they have been implementing what she's learnt in the Masters and taking that back and implementing that back over in Timor Lest with, with um, you know, people there in her community. Mm. So you're just working with people in the, on the ground in that very local context mm. and facilitating learning, yep. you know, skilling people up. Mm. By, yeah. by, by facilitating a learning process where they get to examine things for themselves, they get to look at themselves and then look at the issues and the deeper stuff that's going on in their own communities. Uh, similar sorts of things um, have been happening in Canada with some of the First Nations communities over there. I feel that, you know, what we offer here is, is, is really beneficial to all peoples. So, first of all, we have a commitment to, you know, have as many of many Indigenous people skilled up as possible. But I also feel that that needs to be partnered with, you know, being open to skilling up non-Indigenous people as well, because there are going to be, and there are, and there will continue to be non-Indigenous people that work in these areas too. So, to me, it's it's kind of like two pronged. Which are skilling up our own mob, but then skilling up non-Indigenous people as well, who come here and have that interest and, and that have that commitment. Mm. So I just, to me, it's just really about us going from strength to strength and to keep doing what we're doing, but just to build on that and to expand that further. Mm. To have um, more Indigenous people with, you know, postgraduate qualifications, because I guess whether we like it or not. Um, that's what's needed to what we teach or, or the way in which we approach our teaching within trauma and healing for example how that's based on looking at more than just the professionals combining the professional with the personal so we have our professional approach we are academics and we and we disseminate information and we engage people intellectually but it's also looking at that's not just that we engage people beyond that to start to just kind of feel from here a bit and to engage in a way where they start to learn more about themselves. So they're not just learning about information, they're not just regurgitating, but in fact they're being required to say, okay, well, I'm learning all about, you know, healing childhood traumatisation. I'm learning all about trans and intergenerational trauma. Where do I sit in this? Mm. Where do I sit in this with a context that, that, that clearly has um, aspects that involve the deeper human experience. It's not just about being able to gauge a formula. Mm. Not that those things aren't valuable because they are, 
but it's just looking at it saying, well, when we're talking about teaching in trauma and healing and we're examining that, it's not just about the professional, mm. it's about us. Mm. And the, the stronger and the clearer that we get to understand ourselves, the better equipped we are to work with others.